I'll be here. They found a body in one of the incinerators. No idea who it is. Who's in charge? Abattoir manager, Ian Hobswain. Right, let's see what we're dealing with. Where is he? By the end of the plant. Just follow your nose. What time do you call this? Stoner Crows. He's back from his secondment. Bet you've been counting the days. No, don't flatter yourself. What can you tell us, Marcus? Male, average build, but flexion of the elbows, knees and neck, typical of severely burned bodies. I've put his height at around 175. Age? Rough guess. It's amalgam fillings, so it suggests he was middle-aged. And there's this. A wedding ring. That's about all I can tell you for now. So no chance of an ID? Well, we might get a profile from the marrow in one of these long bones, but I wouldn't hold out much hope. Pete does bad things to DNA. What about injuries other than... High temperature thermal incineration makes it difficult to determine the cause of death. Post-mortem might give us some more answers. Right. Meantime, I want your team all over this. Prince, blood stains the lot. Uh, Mum, it is an abattoir. Yeah, well, think of it as a challenge, Marcus. <sighs> Mr. Hopswain. I'm um, DCI, Stan Hope. I'm running the investigation. Oh, that must have knocked you for six when you found him. If I hadn't had the power outage, well, he would have been born me. Oh, but he's unrecognisable. Aye, I saw it. So we're going to have to rule him out as one of your employees? He's not. Well, he wasn't. Well, how can you be sure? He's not one of ours. Then how did he end up in one of your kilns? I've no idea. Look, I run a reputable business, and right now it's losing money. Well, the sooner you show us around the premises, the sooner you'll be back up and running. Huh. Stunning bleeding and hoisting, carcasses are butchered and chilled. Any waste we can use gets rendered down, the rest is burned. Slaughter holes are run to FSA regulations. Cleaning dirty areas to avoid contamination. So it'll be hard to hide a body. It didn't come through here. Mm. What about deliveries? 
Around half our ABPs coming from outside, incinerated on site. ABPs? Animal byproducts. Factory waste, fallen livestock. They've got the right paperwork, we'll burn it. Leading edge facility, automated handling. So it would be possible for a body to come through undetected? All our deliveries are stringently checked. Industry standard for best work in practice. But I'm going to need names and addresses of everyone who works here. Porters, butchers, the lot. And a list of your current suppliers. Now that's going to take a while. Well, you better get on with it then. There's got to be an inside job. Somebody who knows the setup. Well, he's got deliveries coming in from all over. That body could have come in from anywhere. Right, get the team in for a briefing. I'm gasping for a cup of tea, eating a sandwich. Male, adult, we're guessing middle-aged. Burnt to a crisp in an abattoir incinerator. No ID, no established time of death. We think the body went into the furnace at 6 p.m. yesterday evening. They routinely inspected at the start of every shift. Yeah, but we've only got their word for that. The shift workers are all accounted for. So either he was killed on a visit to the premises or the body was brought in from outside. Uh, I've been on to missing persons. No one flagged up as reported missing. Well, this fella's wearing a wedding ring. So let's assume he was married. The only camera on site was in the incinerator loading bay. But no surveillance anywhere else? No. Ooh. Anyone think they got something to hide? Yeah, well, Brinkley was found five years ago by trading standards. Ian Hobbswain was found guilty of illegal horse meat sales and failure to keep proper records. Was he? Yeah, four months suspended. Well, maybe he still hasn't cleaned up his act. Kenny, I want to know what's on that footage. Pickups, deliveries. What's he really been up to on those night shifts? Fractures in both legs, probably post-mortem. The muscles and tendons are charred, resulting in the exposure of the underlying bones to heat. He was definitely dead before he went in. Well, that's something. And you know that because... No soot in the airway. And you're still looking the wiser cause of death. Anti-mortem gunshot wound. One shot, close range, back of the head. He was shot? Mm-hmm. 7.65 millimeter ammunition. It was a lucky find, considering the state of the body. Marcus, get that bullet over to ballistics as quick as you can for testing. Time of death? The gut and intestines are still reasonably intact. I'd say they were shielded from the worst of the heat. I'd say he was cremated at most a few hours after he died. And his DNA out of the question? We still don't know who he is. Give us a chance, I'm getting to the good bit. Burnt bodies adopt what's known as a pugilistic attitude. So the arms, they go into a boxing stance. Now, if you look at his hands, they're balled into fists. So his fingertips were protected. We're running a trace for the match. Marcus, I think you just made my day. Now tell me you didn't miss me. Well, don't let it go to your head. Big enough as it is. Shot by a bullet to the back of the head. A few hours at most before he was found. Must have made some noise that someone would have heard it. Not necessarily the din in that place. Now the question is, was he shot at the abattoir and his body hidden on site? Or was he killed elsewhere uh, and then brought in what? Uh, forensics. Run the victim's print. Oh, we're talking. They must have got a record. Yeah. Police elimination database. Our dead man was a copper. So... Could we just rewind to yesterday morning? Uh, your husband left for work as usual, did he? It must have been about 8.30. Uh, it's a 20 minute drive. And you were expecting him home at what time? I promised me he wouldn't be late. Once in his life. We had a send off to get to. Send off? 
retirement bash over at the club. Sort and social and welfare. Your husband was due to retire, was he? It was his last day at work. 38 years he'd been a copper. This was meant to be our time. And you've no idea where he might have gone to? I, I tried calling Haley, my daughter. Her phone was switched off. I was working. Double shift. Yes. All right. It would make you feel better, ma'am. Why would anyone want to kill him? Well, that's what we're trying to find out, pet. So was there anything... Any recent behaviour of your husband or your dad that might have given you cause for concern? He was tired, that's all. Tired of the grind. Well, what about work? Anything giving him any problems? Harry never talked about his case, as he? He didn't bring it home with him. Well, any fallouts at all? Friends, family? Surely this can wait. I'm just trying to get a fix on your dad's state of mind, love. She's still in shock. Look at her. She's barely slept. Well, we'll contact a police liaison officer and they will talk you through what happens next. I'll stay here with her. Make sure she's okay. goes missing. Why wasn't it flagged up to neighbouring stations? Well, I'll find out what time she called it in. Killed on the day he's due to retire, after 38 years on the job. Never turns up for his send-off. Can't say I blame him. Now, well, that might not be much to look at, but here's where we'll get the measure of the man. I do a stand hope, Northumberland and City Police. Mm. Is this about Harry? <sighs> he was due here last night, retirement bash. Yeah, just wanted to give him a good send-off. Mm. Regular, was he? Oh, him and Rita. Every Friday, rain or shine. So were you concerned when they never turned up? Well, Rita called, told us he hadn't come home. Jesse would have gone over if we hadn't been so pushed. Jesse? Other half. A pair of them went way back. Right, so could you give D.S. Healy a statement, love? <laughs> Have you got a minute? Just a few questions I need to ask you. Mm. Good mates, then, you and Harry. Hmm? Well, I knew him better than anybody. Good. Catch up in here, did you? Friday nights. We both joined this club. 18. Cards handed out by Wood Dads. I did the same with Moan, lad. Friendship even survived him becoming a copper. I'll give it a rest, lads. A bit of respect. Sorry, man. Uh, just lads. When did you speak to him last? Well, we spoke on the phone. Mm. Must have been yesterday lunchtime. One of them gave him a heads up this leave and do they were planning. Yeah, and how do you see him on the phone? Preoccupied. Not quite himself, you know. Yeah, what do you mean by that? Well, I put it down to this impending retirement. He'd never have told Rita, but Harry was dreading it. All that time on his hands now. Yes, Healy. Hi, good, good to meet you. Stanford. Hello, good to meet you. Please take a seat. Not sure it's really sunk in yet. Oh, uh, well, when it's one of your own. Any leads you can work with? No, we're still trying to build a picture of his final movements. 
We know he left for work as usual, the day he died. Well, that doesn't stack up. Why do you say that? He rang in sick, think he spoke to DC Williams. So nobody saw him at all yesterday? He hadn't been himself all week. Any recent cases might ring alarm bells? You think this might have been work-related? Well, I can't rule it out, the manner of his death. If Harry had concerns, he would have brought them to me. You said he wasn't himself. He seemed out of sorts, that's all. Hmm. Well, I'll need to talk to DC Williams. There should be a briefing, some kind of pep talk. No, oh, plenty of time for that. Is this his desk? We do a lot of whip round. Do you see Jacqueline Williams? Friends call us Jack, Mom. You spoke to him on the phone yesterday. Said he wasn't coming in. He said if anyone asked, he was under the weather. What sort of a copper was he? Safe pair of hands. Solid. Reliable. Though sometimes he skimped on the paperwork. Harry was one of the old school. Now, Brinkley Abattoir, where we found him. They were fined a few years back. We refer the case to the CPS. DC Fenton get involved? Not directly. The legwork was done by local trading standards. Right. Okay, DS Healy. I'm going to need all these recent case loads, laptop. I'll make sure you get everything, DC okay. Williams. Can you give a hand? We all want to nail whoever did this. We'll keep you up to speed. Any developments? Thanks. So, poor a Siggy. Lies to his wife, lies to his colleagues. That's somewhat at odds with all those glowing testimonials. And yes, I am. Says he's out of sorts. What do we make of D.I. Chandra? A rising star by all accounts. Ambitious young copper. What was it you called him? Old school. Ah, well, that could make for a dysfunctional relationship. Oh, I wouldn't do anything about that. Meaning? Harry Fenton's recent caseload rested from fraud. Now, I want you to look at every single case. Potential ties to organised crime, identity theft, online hacking. People you wouldn't want to mess with. You're saying this might be gang-related? Oh, I can't rule it out, can you? Now, we know he left home round about 8.30, morning of the day he was murdered. Now, if he's not at work, we need to trace his whereabouts in those missing hours. I've got Harry Fenton's phone lock here. Now, that was a police issue mobile, wasn't it? Now, one contact flags up. Five calls from a pay as you go in the past two days. One on Friday afternoon. Call lasted less than a minute. So the day he died, who's he talking to? Yeah, we're still getting a fix on the GPS data. So any other theories while we're waiting? I'd want to check on Harry's finances, Mum. Mm? Well, he's uh, fully signed up into the police pension scheme. Mm. But if Harry was killed in the line of duty... Oh, well, we're a long way from proving that, Kenny. Well, his wife would be due a substantial payout. Uh, it may not be anything, Mum. Oh, go on, spit it out. Uh, well, I did some follow-up into those horse meat sales. Uh, the foreman that was found at Brankley. Yeah, Hobbs Wayne. Yeah, um, reportedly threatened the abattoir inspectors. Uh, uniform were called in as backup. Mm. He's also the go-to Northumberland knacker man. So a man who handles guns for a living. Does it make him a murderer? No, but it makes him a person of interest. Mr. Hubswain. What is it this time? That fella you found in your furnace. Oh, we've got an ID. Copper. Never seen him before. Where were you Friday afternoon? Hexham races. Iron up some more horse flesh. See, we know you were done for malpractice. Horse meat, ready meals. I paid the fine, took on board the recommendations. Ah, now, here's the thing. I'm not sure you did. Maybe that's how this body got in undetected. Look, sometimes we cut corners. We need to, to survive in this business. I've just had a chat with the CSI team. They tell me you've been uncooperative. So, oh, bit of a pattern forming here. Threatened them too, did you? Look, this place is on its arse as it is. 
Once word gets out they've found a body, it'll finish us. We'll need to see your gun permits, any firearms you're licensed to hold. Going to tell us why? Well, this copper had been shot through the back of the head. And you think I've done it? Well, I'm sure you won't mind us ruling you out. Yes, Kenny? Ah, uh, you might want to go over to Low Palton, man. We found Harry's car. Is it definitely his? Definitely. Registration matches. Low Palton? What's he doing parked up there? All this clutter on the front seat rules out any passenger. Drove here alone. Marcus found a second set of tire tracks. So meeting someone? Shoes here. Petrol receipt. Salt and burn services. Friday's date, 1603. Well, get a word in the garage, CCTV. Ma'am, we've just checked the SIM card intel on Harry's missing phone. Mast gives a reading top of that hill. You should take a look at this, ma'am. I think we might have found something. It looks like someone has tried to clean this place up. Is that blood? Ma'am. It's definitely blood. Right. Get forensics up here. I think we've just found our murder scene. What have you got? We've got some partial shoe treads. It's a heavy walking boot, size tens. It's a public footpath. That could be long to anyone. Know. There's a distinctive gouge mark worn into the tread. Got anything else for us to work with? Yep, over here. See this drag mark? I'd say the body was brought through here because the ground was wet. It's left a decent imprint. What you're saying? He was dragged from those outbuildings all the way down to the lane. Just about sums it up. Well, that would have taken some to him. Right. Get that blood checked. With any luck, we'll have a match. I'll keep you posted, Mum. Rain Friday. Late afternoon, didn't it? That barn's the nearest place you can take shelter. Well, they could have just sat in the car. Mm. This must have been planned. Premeditated. Whoever killed him led him off the beaten track. Away from any witnesses. Where's this lane lead to? Well, a couple of villages. Bowlam and Hartbridge. Farming country, both sides of the river. That direction... Yeah, what well, leads to the B road we came in on. So Harry comes up here to meet his killer. Hmm? How does he end up in that abattoir? 20 miles away.
Mum, Ian Hobsbawm's alibi checked out. What? The head groundsman at Hexham Races can confirm he worked at the meet. The last race was the 4.45. So that gives him a couple of hours tops. Well, it's tight, but it's still possible. Now, ballistics have run a check on Hobsbawm's pistol. They've ruled it out as the murder weapon. His only other firearm was a bolt gun. So what sort of weapon are we looking for? An Italian Beretta M1935. It's World War II standard issue. Oh, great. It means any Tom, Dick or Harry could have one gathering dust up in the attic. Well, I think we can rule out Harry, man. Unless he shot himself. Very funny. They checked the footage of the petrol station. Confirms Harry was alone in the car. Right. So what have we got? He's alive and well at four. It rains around five up at Low Poulton. I mean, Brinkley's, what, 20 miles away. So that body had to have been taken into that abattoir about an hour later. Six-ish. Yeah, which Nora's done our list of suppliers, ma'am. Right. Only two vehicles are uh, recorded on camera after 6 p.m. last Friday. One was uh, picking up butchered meat. Um, what's the other one? It's a delivery lorry. At 18.13. Pause it, Kenny. Eggerman's Haulage. The yard's over in Morpeth, ma'am. the foreman. We've just found her. I'm D.S. Healy from Northumberland City Police. This is Lucy I stand for. Is there somewhere quiet we can talk, love? We can go in the office. Yeah, grand. Uh, aye, we deliver to Brentley. We've had a contract with the abattoir for, for years now. Hmm. Well, one of your trucks was there on Friday afternoon. We'd like a word with the driver. Well, that would have been Naz. Naz. He's due out on a job. Ah, uh, well, could you catch him, love, please? Give Naz a poke, would you? I need a word in the office. You're going to tell us what this is about? Ah, uh, well, we're here in connection with a murder, pet. Please, detective. The body was discovered in the abattoir incinerator. What's that got to do with us? Well, we think it was delivered there in that truck. <laughs> no way. The loads are always checked by the drivers. You want to see me? Police are here. Now what? If you could just step in for a second. We're trying to trace the last known whereabouts of this fella. Recognise him? Should I? Detective Constable Harry Fenton. Deceased. Body was found over at Brankley Abattoir. No, you delivered to Brankley. Day he died. Friday afternoon. Aye. So what? Well, I'd like an account of your movements. I collected some crates from Bowmead Foods, catering unit over at Aden Bridge. It's all in the logs. And what time was that? It must have been about 4.30, end of their shift. Right. And this waste you pick up, that's all set for the incinerator, is it? All right, that's right. Right, well, now we're going to need a forensics team to examine the vehicle. Hang on. What for? They're suggesting this body was delivered in the lorry. You thought you'd point the finger at me? I never said that, love. Just making inquiries, that's all. Do you think I would have missed the body? Well, it didn't walk there. I know that much. You're welcome to check any vehicles you want to. They'll have all been cleaned and disinfected. Health and safety. But I'm late for a job, so there's nothing else. Oh, well, we know where we can find you. He's a decent driver. Bit of a chip. That's all. Get Kenny over to Bone Made Foods. 
do a check on his movements, factory set up, and do a background check on the pair of them. Just give me a minute. Jesse Hennen's lad, isn't it? Garrison? Oh, I didn't know you worked here. Must be nearly a year now. Aren't you one of the drivers? Only the forklift. Oh. Warehouse stuff mainly. Yeah, but you don't miss much. All the comings and goings. I keep a log of every consignment. Pickups, deliveries. Oh, you hear about Harry? Why'd you say that? I just wondered, that's all. Hmm. I know he'd been here, asking questions. Has he? When was that? A few weeks ago. Something to do with an audit. Did he tell you that down the club? He said he couldn't talk about it. I should get back to work. No. Don't let me stop you. Eggerman's haulage, what can you tell us? The yard's currently under investigation. I'm the SIO. What? Suspected fraud? Anonymous source rang Crime Stoppers, claimed some of the drivers were laundering dirty money. Did this source give you names? No, but you followed it all. Harry went to the yard with some initial inquiries. Did that throw up anything we should know about? Nothing incriminating. The case is ongoing. As for all sharing, why the sudden interest in Ekermans? Oh, it might not be relevant at this stage, Rolf. If you've got a lead, I should know about it. Harry was family. This is personal. Yeah, which is why I think it's best if you took a step back. Okay. This might not be relevant either, but Harry asked to be taken off the case, cited a conflict of interest. Didn't tell you what that was? I didn't ask. He was all set to retire. Exemplary record. I wasn't going to compromise that. Oh, I'm glad we've got that straight. It's a pity you didn't think to mention that before. investigating a possible fraud. Best mate's son works at that yard. Well, plenty of people in Sorton do. Aye, but that might explain his conflict of interest. Harry wants out. D.I. Chanda would have kept that little nugget to herself. What if Gareth tipped off Harry? Either that, or Gareth was in on this scam. And Harry found out? It's a possibility. Let's see if his wife can tell us anything. Your daughter not here? Had to go into work. Ah, uh, Mrs. Fenton. We found your husband's car. It was parked in Woodland, edge of the moor, a few miles outside Morbeth. Any idea what he was doing there? It's take himself off whenever it suited him. Um, used to walk for miles. We think he'd arrange to meet someone. I can't think who. Well, they're going to be releasing your husband's body in a few days, so you'll need to make arrangements. Well, he'll need something to wear. Uh, best jackets laid out on the bed. Well, I'll go and fetch it. Well, he must have been well-liked, all these tributes. Uh, Eileen came round from the club, sat for a while. Mm. Now, her son, Gareth, works over at Agerman's Yard. Jesse got him a job there. Did you know the yard was under investigation? No. No, I didn't. Mm. Harry never mentioned it. No. Sent flowers, Agerman's. Courier dropped him off yesterday. Handwritten card. Mm. D. 
Daly and then company director. So did Harry know him personally? He grew up in Sorton. Ah, and they kept in touch. Oh, Daly command didn't have time for the likes of us. He hasn't set foot here in 20 odd years. Pockets are clean. Shoes are a size 12. Yeah. Same as those shoes in his car. There's nothing else we can work with. Give us 10 minutes. And we'll head back to the station. Let's be careful. This beach. As pockets are quick, son. Hi, all the way over to the holiday park. I know these sands well enough, love. I'll watch me step. As it raises. Right. Plenty of here if you know where to look. No, I just follow the dimples. <laughs> Something you wanted? Eggerman's haulage yard. You must have known there was a fraud inquiry. Must have. Well, your garret works there. Harry warned us to keep an eye on him. Said some of the drivers were stealing money. So it wasn't Gareth tipped off the police? No, it wasn't. Did you put a word in with Dale Eggerman? I know he grew up in Sorton back before he made his money. Spoke to his secretary. Asked if he might help us out. Offers him a job. Adele's never forgotten where he came from. Even donated some money to the club. What did Harry say to that? I'm not sure he ever ventured an opinion. Well, he must have said something with the drivers on the tape. I did talk. Probably meant nothing. Tides on the turn. Aye. Let's go back. He said Harry hadn't been feeling himself lately. Ah, he's feeling his age, that's all. No, I think it was more than this retirement. I think he wanted to get something off his chest. He'd given his life to the job. All those years of hard graft, taken for granted, put out the grass. But I can make a man bitter, even the best of them. Cheers, thanks. Uh, Ma'am, I've just spoken to forensics. They found a blood trace on the boot tread. Uh, blood's confirmed as matching Harry's. And have we ruled these boots out as being his? Wrong size feet, Ma'am. So they must have been worn by whoever killed him. Yeah. I think we've been sidelined by this possible link to the abattoir. We should be concentrating on this fraud inquiry. Eggerman's haulage, drivers laundering dirty money. Uh, there's no record of Gareth Hennings being questioned, ma'am. Uh, but Harry did take a statement from Naz Ahmed. So Ahmed lied when he said he didn't recognize him. Yeah, well, there's a good reason why he hasn't been straight with us. Naz Ahmed's got previous for violent affray, a six month stretch in Durham. Well, that'll explain the crust on him. Uh, listen, I spoke to the suppliers, uh, Bowmead Food. The statement he gave checks out, he left the factory at 4.37. It was uh, recorded and verified by the factory foreman. Yeah, but the... He didn't get to that abattoir till after six. So what was keeping him? Well, there was a bit of a detour. Uh, according to the job sheets we got from the haulage uh, company, he stopped off to pick up some fallen livestock. Yeah, where? Where's the pickup point? Near the village of Hartbridge, ma'am. Hartbridge? That's less than a mile from our murder scene. Officers, proceed with caution. Suspect could be armed and dangerous.
We're at the haulage yard now, ma'am. Uh, no sign of the boss. She went home lunchtime. Looks like she's cleared the office. Well, she won't get in your way then. Now, you'll need a warrant to confiscate what's left. Computer, CCTV, and get a home address. You've arrested Naz Ahmed? Aye, just about to question him. And when were you planning on telling me? Well, you're here now, aren't you? This could compromise my fraud investigation. I'm afraid that can't be helped, love. I want to sit in on this. Well, you can watch from the viewing room. And just remember who you're talking to. Mom. 30 grand in used notes. Took us a while to count it. Now, we know this is dirty money. I'll pick it up and I'll drop it when I'm told to. Nah, I think it's more than that. I think you're running this scam with your forewoman. I barely know her. Ah, well, she's disappeared with the rest of the dosh. Know where she's gone? Hmm. Well, we've checked the books. There's plenty of money missing. Now then, you collected some fallen livestock from Broadwick Farm the day the deceased was murdered. Farmer needed some stillborn lambs collecting. Sent me back an hour or so. Why didn't you mention this before? I didn't think it was important. Check inside the bags, did you? Why would I? It was clearly labelled. Now, the road from that farm takes you right past our murder scene. I don't know anything about that. Mm. Now, here's something else you don't know nothing about. DC Harry Fenton. He interviewed you four weeks ago down at the depot. He talked to a few of the drivers. Ah, but none of them have previous for violent assault. I think it was onto this scam of yours, threatened to land you back inside. I'd like this interview adjourned with immediate effect for the purpose of conferring with my client. For the benefit of the tape, William Brackley, Nazar Med solicitor, has entered the room. I only hope he's been appraised of his rights. This man has been arrested in connection with a murder. I'm entitled to ask him a few preliminary questions. Well, if you had any evidence, you would have charged him by now. What I do have is a suspect with form who was interviewed by the deceased in connection with a theft. We have proof of his involvement in criminal activity and a body retrieved from an abattoir furnace, the abattoir, your client delivered to on the day the deceased was killed. Believe me, sunshine, you're not going anywhere anytime soon. Mom. Who told that brief we'd arrested Naz Ahmed? Uh, he just turned up at the front desk and demanded to see him. Yeah, well, he's hardly a typical solicitor, is he? Well, he didn't buy that suit on a legal aid salary. He'll cover his dry cleaner. Mom. Mom. So who's picking up the tab? The forensics have had a breakthrough. Yeah, go on, I'm listening. Uh, they lifted fibres from the haulage truck that matched those found at the crime scene. Proof that the body was in that truck? Can you get a forensic team up to Broadwick Farm where Naz made that pickup? And get up there yourself, keep an eye on them. First thing tomorrow morning. Mom. Mark, run a search on this slick Willie. See where he's crawled out from. You've got nothing to time to Harry's murder. If he's guilty, we'll find it. Okay, maybe I came on too strong. Try telling that to the boss. I just want to find out who killed him. I've had a drink after work. There might be something I can add to the mix. Aiden, get yourself over to Naz Ahmed's flat. Looking for a murder weapon. Looks like I'm working late. Can I help you? Uh, Mr. Aikerman. Aye. Uh, I'm DCI Vera Stanhope. I'm sorry for the intrusion, sir. I assume this is about the fraud inquiry? Ah, uh, no. I'm from major crime. Uh, investigating a murder, but we've reason to believe the two cases could be connected. I heard you made an arrest at the yard. Aye, on suspicion of money laundering. 
One of the drivers at the moment, working in collusion with the forewoman, Jill Crowley. No, no, you got that wrong, yeah. Jill's been on the payroll for years. <sighs> well, that's as may be, sir, but she's absconded. Whereabouts unknown. Surely you must have known the police were questioning the drivers. I've ta taken a step back in recent years. More hands off these days. So you wouldn't have come across this driver, Naz Ahmed? It's a record for violent assault. Well, the running of the yard that was all down to Jill. Mm. Now, this is the fellow who was murdered. A copper, name of Harry Fenton. Uh, I heard. Uh, of course, you sent his widow flowers. That would be my PA. A charitable gesture on behalf of the company. You didn't know him personally, then? Well, why would I? Uh, he grew up in Sorton. It's been a while since I've been back there. Well, he'd been investigating these allegations of fraud weeks leading up to his death. What, so you think he was killed in relation to this? Well, that's a possibility. I'm not dead! Well, excuse me, there's a family get-together. <laughs> uh, well, don't let me keep you. Now, uh, <laughs> let me give you my card. No, private number. Any developments, you know, we'll cooperate fully with the police. No, oh, thanks. That always makes my job just a little bit easier. And I'll give my condolences to the assistant chief constable. I've been out to play golf with him on occasion. claims he was here when the uh, dead livestock were collected. He said it was bagged and labelled, so he let the driver get on with it. Right. Did he, um, confirm the driver was Naz Ahmed? Yeah, yeah, he's met him a few times. Regular pickup. Well, ask him if he saw anyone else near the murder. On his land, in the lane, anything out of the ordinary. Will do, ma'am. Ma'am, we've probably lost vital evidence. All that rain won't have helped. Well, we're just going to have to work with what we've got. Friday afternoon. Got anything unusual going on around here? Or on the land or over on the lane? Get out of the way, these containers, aren't they? Yeah, they've got to be kept away from the rest of the livestock. It's by security guidelines. Well, anyone could have had access. I want a trace on these bins and all these tyre tracks checked. Fenton's DNA has got to be here somewhere. I'm on it. Kenny. Huh? Day Lakerman. What have you got on him? I'm CEO of Ackerman's Holdings. Made his money in haulage back in the 80s. Well, I've heard his name whispered from time to time. Contracts for kickbacks. Slippery fish. Nothing ever sticks. What if this money laundering went right to the top? High-profile businessman. Nah, too much to lose. Yeah, precisely. I mean, how far would you go? Murder. I ran a check on uh, Naz Ahmed's brief, William Brackley. Uh, practicing barrister, criminal law. He's also done some work for the Police Federation. Sounds like another conflict of interest. Can we tie Slick Willie to Aikerman? Well, he argued the defence case on a class action lawsuit. The defendant in question, Aikerman's holdings. He wasn't here for Naz Ahmed. Aikerman sent him. Eyes and ears, wanted to know what we had on him, and we gave him the lot. Mom, we've got a lead on the whereabouts of Jill Crowley. She used a cash point card at a village convenience store. Uh, Fullburn, it's over in the park. Yeah, I know where Fullburn is. Kenny, do some more digging on Aikerman. Competitors, contacts, where he's putting his money. I'm um, what about Naz Ahmed? Nothing's come back from the south of his flat. Yeah, well, he's still in the frame for murder. Anyone wants us, we'll be over in Fulburn. Well. Unless there's somewhere else you'd rather be. Hmm. Ready when you are. That's right, just up the head. Thanks, love. No worries.
Mark sent through some intel on Harry Fenton's finances. Might not be important, but recently he paid for a cruise. Six weeks in the Caribbean, first class cabin. That would have taken a bite out of his pension. Oh, not the red ones. Any joy with Jill Crawley? Right, Cashier said she bought food and firewood. Didn't mention where we might find her. Mm, Brantonburn Cottage, top of the year. Find out who owns this cottage. Fraudulent claims for VAT repayments, all these vehicles on your books. What makes you so sure they're not legit? We check the registrations. Those lorries you purchased, they don't exist. No, easy way to make money disappear. And don't insult me by denying it, love. That driver you're covered for, he's already dropped you in it. Nas wouldn't do that. He's oh, a... you two are an item, are you? So that's why she took him on without checking his references. I was told to hire Nas. Who by? Dale Aikerman. We know this cottage is owned by Aikerman's holdings. Yeah, which makes me suspect he's involved in this scam right up to his eyeballs. Who else is involved in this scam? Gareth Hennens. Gareth? Yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't have a clue. Well, he keeps a record of all the deliveries. Yeah. But he knows when to keep his mouth shut. So you don't know who it was tipped off the police? I put money on Danny Welsh, one of the packers. I sacked him for being drunk on the job. You must have known you were pushing your luck. Then along comes some nosy copper, asking awkward questions. I had nothing to do with what happened to him. So was it Nas killed Harry Fenton? No. Well, I tell you this much for nothing. He's been playing you like a fish. Just a quick chat with you, ma'am. She told us she'd found his car. Aye, that's right. Is that where it happened then? Up there on the moor? We believe so, love. She just sits there. Hasn't moved all day. More questions. But just a few more things, Mrs. Fenton. Well, we know your husband had booked you both on a cruise. He said we should go on a holiday. First class cabin. We'd scrimped and saved for years. If we went out, we went to the bloody club. He promised all that was going to change. Now, see, here's the thing that's been troubling me. The profile we've been building of your husband doesn't quite stack up with the version you've been giving us. I don't know what you mean. He lied about his whereabouts, so is there something you haven't told us? What kind of question's that? It's one I'm asking your ma'am. I thought he was playing away. Dad, don't make me laugh. What would you know? You've barely shown your face in weeks. Now, what makes you think your husband was being unfaithful? He wasn't. Phone calls. These last two months, I'd answer, she'd always hang up. Well, if they hung up, how do you know it was a woman? A wife can always tell. I can't listen to this. I put the holiday down to a guilty conscience. Did you confront him with your suspicions? Didn't have the guts. Didn't want to know. He loved you. You know that much. It changed love these past couple of months. Then Friday, when he didn't come home, I thought 
thought he was with her. Right, nice to see you tomorrow. Bye. Have you got a minute, love? Cloak and dagger. No, I just wanted a chat. A chat about Harry. But you must have worked closely with him. Hmm? We all did. Tight knit team. So you might know why he wanted off the Aikerman case. Look, I just want to find out who killed him, love. I think it might be relevant. Off the record. If that's what it takes. It was me and Harry doing the legwork. We only had this tip off to go on. Anonymous call. Once we started asking questions, I knew we were onto something. Just when things were starting to get a case together and it started to slide. Harry started losing interest and he tells me that it's not worth pursuing. It made no sense. Did you share your concerns with the SIO? I told her there was leads needed following up. She closes it down, cited a lack of evidence. I thought maybe she was covering for Harry. Well, that's a bit of an assumption. Unless you know something I don't. You must have looked at Aikerman's holdings. Aye, I've thrown a couple of heads at it. Pull out the case file on the NUS strikes. Picket line arrest, 1989. 1989? That's nearly 30 years ago. Way before your time. But not before Harry's. You're after some dirt. You need to start to do some digging. So what have you got on Jill Crowley? Well, she's admitted to her partner money laundering and we'll take a full statement tomorrow. Did she implicate anybody else? Oh, come on, Aidan. It's my case. We think Harry had a hunch that Del Aikerman was in on it. The CEO? <laughs> He's practically retired. You know a bit about him, then? Only by reputation. Yeah, captain of industry, local lad made good. If we can time for this fraud rap, you know what that means? Another promotion. We can put him away for ten years. What if we can tie him to Harry's murder? You're seriously telling me he's in the frame? He's got the means, he's got the motive, we just need to nail him. Ever considered a job in fraud? Are you making me an offer? I could certainly put a word in for you. I'm not sure the DCI appreciates your talents. Got to take this. Sorry. Don't keep her waiting on my account. Mom? Give us ten minutes. I was on my way home. Well, via the pub. So what couldn't wait? A US picket line dispute, 1989. What? I know, that's going back. Now, Dale Agerman was charged in connection with an assault. Union shop steward, who later retracted his statement. Guess who the arresting officer was? DC Harry Fenton. Now we've been assuming Fenton was out to nail Agerman. What if he was trying to protect him? You know what you're suggesting? Mm. I'm suggesting D.C. Fenton was bent. The strike was called over new working agreements. The Siemens Union blockaded the ports. Aikerman gave his drivers an ultimatum. If they didn't cross the picket line, they were out of a job. Uh, Harry and Aikerman, they had history. Ties that go way back. Oh, well, there's your conflict of interest. Aikerman was paying him for information. So why shoot the messenger? Maybe he 
got greedy, Kenny. I don't know. So I want Fenton's case files examined again. We're looking for phone logs, emails, anything that implicates Ackerman. Now, come on, let's move it. And in the meantime, let's keep a lid on this and no contact with other departments. Our priority is finding Harry's killer. The rest will come out in the wash. Uh, Mom, that list of club members that you asked for. Uh, a couple of names flagged up. Gareth Hennings was cautioned a few months ago. Got into a fight outside of the club. Uh, only one other member with previous that we know of. Danny Welch? Uh, yeah, drunk and disorderly. That's our whistleblower down at the yard. He used to be a member. Spent most of his time and his money in here, especially after he lost his job. That'd be at the haulage yard. Aye, that's right. So your Gareth would have spent a lot of time with him. Danny Welch was bad news. A couple of drinks inside him, he'd usually kick off. Right, so can you tell us where we can find him, love? Danny's dead. He drowned six months ago. But why would Harry review a case that's already closed? Hmm? Wasn't even his department. We're looking for gain and wire. Is this about Danny? Can we come in, love? He was on his way home. He was drunk. The police found his body washed up in Barrow Ridge Bay. They said he fell off the cliff path. The coroner concluded it was an accident. Oh, yeah, easier for everyone. Meaning? Oh, Danny Welch had it coming. No great loss. Never even got to see this one. Now, Harry Fenton, local copper, you must have heard what happened to him. Yeah, I heard. Well, he'd been taking an interest in Danny's death. Going to tell us why? I went to see Harry at the club. I asked him to look at the case again. And what did he say to that? He said he'd look into it. He warned me not to get me hopes up. He even stopped taking the calls. Oh. <clears throat> Is this your number? Yeah, that pay as you go. His daughter warned us off in the end. Hayley, she warned you off. Harry must have told her I'd been giving him grief. I just needed to know. So, was Danny drinking in the club the night he died? He would have been with his mates from work. And did those mates know he tipped off the police about the money laundering? Oh. He was angry that they'd sacked him. I told him not to make that call. Well, that wouldn't have played out too well, would it? Danny was a whistleblower over at the yard. Murdered for tipping off the police, Harry was on to it, ended up dead himself. There's still fellas drinking at the club. Night he died. Headed home to Gainer. He was walking in the wrong direction. Well, he certainly gets around. Doesn't he just? We're just friends. No, oh, none of my business, love. What was it you wanted? Oh, just a little chat, love. About Danny Welch. We know your dad was looking into his death. You knew it was Gaynor making those phone calls to the house, didn't you? I had a fair idea. Well, if she's the other woman, why not put your mum's mind at rest? I didn't know she suspected. That was the first I've heard of it. Nah, I think there's more to it than that. My dad should never have been looking into the case. He said it was best if we kept it between us. Do the pair of you fall out over it? 
He found out I'd been round to see Gainer. He blew up in me face. Mum, Dale Air comes here for you. I uh, said he's not used to waiting. He needs to speak to you personally. Well, it saves us having to bring him in. Mr. Aikerman. I'd like a few minutes alone with Jill Crowley. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. She's still being questioned. I've decided not to press charges. Wouldn't look good for the business. I'll be the one to decide which charges to press. But since I got you here, there's a few more questions I'd like to ask you. I've got nothing to hide. Mm, good. Where were you Friday afternoon? Uh, I was at the charity do. My company's one of the sponsors. Danny Welch. He was sacked from your haulage yard. Now, he tipped the police off about the money laundering. Ended up dead two weeks later. As I said, Jill did all the hiring and firing. Well, this driver she hired, currently in custody, Naz Ahmed, it was you who put her up to hiring him. Now, that'd make me a liar. Wouldn't it just? Harry Fenton's phone logs. Evidence he called your mobile two weeks ago, the day before the fraud squad drops in at the depot. I, a detective, rang me, wanted to ask a few questions. A meeting was set up. It'll all be in the diary. Didn't say what he wanted to talk about? I assume it was the ongoing inquiry. No, 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 that won't wash. DC Fentner taking himself off the case, conflict of interest. Might explain why he never turned up. Hmm. Now, here's a face you ought to recognise, despite the cuts and bruises. Press charges against you for assault. That was years ago. After one of your heavies beat him up. Charges that were dropped. Now, why was that, do you reckon? Hmm? Because one of the officers working the case convinced him it was in his best interests. And in return, D.C. Fenton, who you've never met, gets hold of a list of known agitators, several of whom are banged up. That's all conjecture. And you've been greasing his palm ever since, haven't you? Backhanders, bribes, call it what you will. Libelous speculation. You're up to your eyeballs in this money laundering scam. Harry tips you the wink. Two weeks later, he's murdered, and his body delivered to that abattoir in one of your trucks. You don't know who you're dealing with here. I'd like to make a phone call. William Brackley? Oh, I expect you've got your brief on speed dial. You're going to need him, pet. His alibi stacks up. He was definitely there at the charity lunch. Well, a man like Eagerman, he's not going to get his hands dirty, is he? Yeah, Mom? What? William Brackley's demanding to see you. Is he indeed? Get onto that charity website. See if you can find out what time Eggerman left that do. Oh, Mr. Brackley. Right, you have no right to question him without a legal representative. Oh, no, your client agreed to a voluntary interview. And I won't be taking a lecture on ethics from you. Sorry, what's that supposed to mean? I know you passed on details of Naz Ahmed's interview, and that's a clear breach of client confidentiality. Yes, but you can't prove anything. No, maybe not. But I will be passing on my concerns to the Bar Council. So you better watch your step, sunshine. Mm.
I could have come down to the station. Uh, I wanted to keep it between us. Yeah. Okay. I'm all ears. You said you'd never met Dale Aikerman. I think I'd have remembered. That charity lunch you attended last week, his company was one of the sponsors. <laughs> Been checking up on me. Saw your name on the guest list, that's all. Well, if Aikerman was there, I certainly didn't speak to him. You dragged me down here just to ask me that. Something's come to light in the course of our inquiries concerning D.C. Fenton. Is this about his conflict of interest? No, no I think he might have been corrupt. Harry? No, no way. You seem pretty sure about that. Yeah, I worked alongside him 24-7. He might have had his faults, but Bent? No chance, not in a million years. We know that he made contact with L. Aikerman weeks before he died. I think he deliberately misled the fraud investigation. Take it you can back this up. That one that you applied for to order the hoardage yard, someone else saw fit to make a copy. All warrants are tagged and recorded. You know that as well as I do. Harry wouldn't be that stupid. I'm guessing he took it to Dale Aikerman. But you don't have any proof? Redacted phone logs, missing transcripts or witness statements. He was trying to hide the evidence, covering his tracks. Who else knows about this? Right now, just the two of us. Do us a favour and keep it that way. I'm going to have to share this with the boss. Just let me do some digging. A couple of hours. If one of my team is on the take, I'm the best person in place to bring this to light. Anyone else, the whole unit's tarnished. Aiden. A couple of hours, then I'm taking it to the DCI. I'll let you know what I come up with. How did that go? I think she took the bait. in love is that there's always a trail when you look for it like these phone calls you've been making to a man you've never met now deleting these emails might buy you some time love but i know a rotten apple when i smell one i'll talk but not here harry didn't ask to be taken off the case it was you wanted him out of the loop you were afraid this fraud case was going to blow up in your face. Now here you are obstructing a murder investigation. I did nothing to compromise your case. Nothing. You tipped off Aiderman, told him we'd made an arrest. Twenty minutes later, that lawyer turns up. So what was it Aiderman offered you, eh? Hey? Hmm? Leg up the matter. Dinner with the ACC. We've been investigating a private security firm. They had a contract with Aikerman. Construction sites, door work. The manager had formed for tax evasion and... In the course of our investigation, this... Manager and I... We... Got a bit too close. So Aikerman was blackmailing you? Let's just say he used it as leverage. So why didn't you take it upstairs, love? Hmm? Fess up to your mistakes. He's got friends in high places. I hardly think they'd have given me the benefit of the doubt. No, you'll never find that out now, will you? Tell me something. Do you think Aikerman killed Harry Fenton? I've been asking myself the same question. They're going to want your Warren card, love. I 
meant to lie to you. You played me. You know better than he is. There's enough on there to implicate Ackerman in serious fraud. If I'm going down, I'm taking him with me. Harry and me were born within weeks of each other. Even then I was a few pounds heavier. <laughs> I remember us as kids. We combed the beach together. Wagging school for some crabbing. <laughs> Growing up. Married. Kids. But always look out for our own. Always look out for each other. And the people at the club, they were like family. You ask anyone sitting here, they'll all tell you. Harry was one of the good guys. Yes. One of the best. Something going on we should know about? Oh, not for me to say. You'll find out soon enough. If people here knew I've been talking... Off the record, wasn't it? I'd be finished in this neck. Well, they'll not hear it from me. Danny Welch, that name mean anything to you? He was found on a beach a few months ago. Death by misadventure. Barrow Ridge Bay, right? Yeah. Did you know DC Fenton was looking into that case? Come on, love, it's important. He said it was personal. Something to do with a mate. That's still off the record. We're looking for a match to the treads found at the murder scene. You sure you want to do this now? Well, it wouldn't be a proper week without an arrest or two. I thought maybe I could take you out one night. Just the two of us. This really isn't the time, Gareth. Why not? After everything that's happened, yeah. Gareth Hennings. We need to question you in connection with the death of DC Harry Fenton. What? We're in the middle of a work. Come on. I didn't do it. Hey, if everyone just stays calm, thank you. You're not taking him anywhere. Well, you better find us somewhere where we can talk, love, before this lot decide to lynch him. Upstairs. Oh, what's going on? Stay there. Well, now then, Gareth Pet. Cautioned by the police a few months ago. Bit of a kick-off down in the club. A couple of punters had a pop at each other. Ah, but then you got stuck in. I, I was only trying to break it up. Mm. Danny Welch ever give you any grief? Mm. Your mum said he was trouble after he'd had a few. Danny had a dirty mouth. Liked to throw his weight about. Mm. Now, night... Danny was found dead. You'd been drinking in the bar together. He might have popped in. Oh, I cannot remember. Ah, oh, I think you remember, love. Because you followed him out of the club at closing time, didn't you? Popped up on the prom. And we got proof. At the club van. So? I went for a drive. What, with a skin full of beer? He was headed over to Haley's. Try as luck, he said. Oh, well, I can see you'd have to put a stop to that. Mm. Lost your temper? No. 
It was his fault. He called me a loser. Said Haley wouldn't look at me twice. Is that when you punched him? I'm saying nothing. My mom told us not to. Well, that's because she's trying to protect you, Gareth. But I think it's time you told us the truth, don't you? <laughs> it was an accident, I swear. If he hadn't have been pissed, he'd never have fallen. So when did Harry find out what had really happened? Hmm? He didn't. We well, didn't tell anyone. Because I think you killed him to cover your tracks. Dumped his body in with a pile of dead sheep up at Broadwick Farm. They found his body at Brinkley? <laughs> the abattoir? Ah, because that's where you knew he'd end up. In Nazar Mid's lorry. Why, you wrote it all down on your job sheets. I was here, at the club all evening. Ask me, ma'am. She'll tell you. We had Harry's send-off to organise. So you're telling us you were here all evening with your mum and dad? My dad got back around seven. Got back? Back from where, love? Cash and carry? These job sheets. You ever take them home with you? Why? Hmm? Why'd you do that? Be dad. Needs to check them for us. Make sure I've got things right. without backup. I'll call you if I need you. Your son's just confessed to his part in the death of Danny Walsh. Well, lad gets confused. Is that why you're covered for him? Look, it's all going to come out, so you might as well tell me. I didn't have a choice. Yes, he did. You chose to cover it up. Came home in the state, told us what had happened. I swear I was all set to ring the police. As Eileen stopped us. Said if I did, it was prison. Well, I'm not sure I fancy his chances now. We've been living with it for months. Nothing mentioned. Nothing said. And then Harry finds your number plates caught on camera. If that lesser Danny's had just left it alone, I told him no good would come of it. Ah, Harry knew you were hiding something. Uh, his murder took some planning. I don't think your Gareth has got the mouse for it. So why don't you help me to clear your son's name? Hmm? Harry told me at the turn Gareth in. 24 hours, he said. If I didn't, he was going to arrest him. So you arranged to meet him up on the moor? Nothing the war couldn't solve. Ah, uh, not this time, eh? Just wanted to talk to him. Try and get him to see sense. You took a gun with you. Every intention of killing him. He brought it on himself. Your best mate. He never made me choose. Stumped his body and left it to burn. I couldn't turn Gareth in. My own flesh and blood. All those years, me and Harry, should have counted for something. We could have just... Let it go. No, oh, well, the trouble was, Harry couldn't just let it go, could he? 
And you knew that better than anyone. Copper to the core. Just handing them a recipe. One day you might learn to trust me. What's that supposed to mean? He could have had that gun in his pocket. Uh, well, he didn't. Look, Lily. Still bolding in there, not so much as a second thought. Sounds like D.I. Chandra talking. Go on, say it. Say what? I'm a bad judge of character. Well, that'd be judging after the fact, wouldn't it? Besides, I got D.C. Fenton all wrong, didn't I? Turns out to be the fella they all said he was. <laughs> you know she offered us a job. Did she? Well, at least she had good taste. Tempted, were you? I was flattered. Thought about it. And then I thought... Nah. Better off with old school. Do you want a lift? Oh, you don't like me drive for once? Over my dead body. <laughs> you come in. <laughs> 